Hello everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to go into domain and range from graphs and real-world real situations. Please follow along. Follow along on your own slideshow as we go through this. You're going to be using text boxes a lot, which are found up here. And sometimes we'll have to use a shape button or a line button as well. Going to the first example, we have this situation. We have people riding on rides at a county fair and it's costing them $2 for every ticket they buy. Let's first fill in this table using that first sentence. For every ticket they buy, it's $2. So on this left side, when we have the number of ride tickets, The smallest number of tickets you could buy would be zero tickets. You can't buy any less than zero. You could buy one ticket, and that would be just fine. You could buy five tickets. You could buy 10 tickets, or let's say you have a lot of money. Let's say you buy 25 tickets. If we did buy those tickets, And here's a hint for you. If you make a box and then it's not letting you type in it, you need to like double click or triple click inside that box. Now that we have, we came up with the number of tickets that we're buying, we need to say how much that costs. If you buy zero tickets and it's $2 each, are you gonna pay any money? No, you're not. So you're gonna click $0. If you bought one ticket for $2 each, that's one times two, to get two dollars for that. I'll put the two up there. If you bought five tickets and it was two dollars each, five times two means ten dollars is what you're going to spend. If you bought ten tickets, ten tickets for two dollars is twenty dollars total. And if you have a good amount of money, 25 tickets, that's what you have. You want to go on 25 different rides or you maybe you want to give some to your friends or your family, then you would end up spending $50. Now that we have some examples of the number of tickets that you could buy and the amount that would cost, let's answer this first question. Describe the possible values for the number of tickets that could be purchased. If you're going to this fair, what are the types of numbers listed here? Do we go any smaller than zero? No, we don't. Do we include any decimals? No, we don't. So when we're describing these possible tickets, we have to say, starting from zero, we can buy any whole number of tickets. And you should type this in as well on your computer. Starting with zero, we can buy any whole number of tickets. Second question. Describe the possible values for the total money spent. What was the smallest amount of money you could spend? That's zero dollars. Starting with zero dollars, we add two dollars for each ticket. Because of this, there should be no odd numbers, because no matter how many tickets we buy, we're gonna multiply by two, and any time you take a number and multiply by two, every single time, it's going to give you an even number. Every single time. And that's how we're gonna describe the total amount of money that we spent. Now we have this graph. This graph needs a title, and it needs a label for the x-axis and the y-axis. Over here we have a table, and you've known for a good while now that tables are just one way of showing data, and graphs are an equivalent way of showing data. So we're going to take the numbers from this table and put them on the graph. I don't know how well this will go for you on your computer, but I'm going to use lots of circles. 
we should have one circle at zero, zero. Let's make it black. Then let's do another circle at one comma two. So let's go one over and two up and put a circle. And then maybe move it so that it's in the right spot. Come on, move. This is too small, but it's close enough. At least in this PowerPoint, it's close enough. Next, we have 5, 10. I lost it. Let's do it again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's fill you up. And if this one was all the way up there, then there's no way we're going to fit this 10, 20. Like I could fit the X towards the end, but the Y is going to be too high. I would have needed to change my scale for the Y's to count higher than this. If we were doing this on paper, then it would be really easy to do that, but we do our best. Now let's come up with the name for this. The name for this graph is going to have to do with the number of tickets and the total spent. So let's just call this price for tickets. Because we're buying tickets, tickets are going to be the X, so let's add that. Number of tickets bought, and then let's make another box for the Y. I want to make this one skinny and then I want to rotate it, slide it, triple click, total spent. Well, okay, total money spent. The y axis is how much we spent. The x-axis is how much, how many tickets we bought. And here's a second example for you to do on your own. Please do this one and then submit it. The next part, compare and contrast. On each of these next few slides, there are two graphs. This one has two graphs. What I need you to do is you need to click on it and drag it to whichever side it belongs. There isn't a predefined, I'm not going to tell you which side to put them on, but you need to make it so that every type of graph A looks the same. And every type of graph B also looks the same. You'll know what I mean once you open them and move them around. Once you look at the graphs, it should be pretty easy to pick which side you want them to go on to. And then once you've picked which side you want them all on and they are all similar, make a text box and describe what did part A have? What did the graphs for A have that only A had? Then make another text box and say, what did B have that A didn't have? Finally, you're gonna make a third text box and say what was in common to both graph types. And you're gonna type that in here. 